Welcome back to the Caspa Silver YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a complete guide on how to solo mine with Caspa. Now, I'm going to go over a few different methods on how to solo mine. The first method is not going to require you to be running your own node at home. This is going to be a public solo mining initiative that was created that allows you to connect your miner to this public solo mining pool, you'll be able to solo mine and experience zero fees while doing so. This public solo mining initiative was created by this user right here. So please reach out to him if you have any further questions about how this works. But I'm just going to be going over how to set this up. So when you head over to the website, it is called caspa-notes.org. The link will be down below in the description. You're just going to simply click right here where it says get started mining. And then all you're going to have to do is copy the stratum address and put this into your pool address location within your miner. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste these in here. And then over here, you're going to just put your wallet slash worker. So you'll just put your Caspa address. And then at the very end, I like to name my miner. So I just put period KS0 Pro. And I'm just going to click save. After doing that, you're going to go back to this website and then just click right here where it says open dashboard. And then this is going to open a very nice dashboard that will then allow you to see your stats for your miner. So I'm going to go ahead and just head over to my mining address and make sure that I grab that. And I'm going to copy that, go back to this website and right here where it says wallet, I'm going to go ahead and paste in my wallet, click enter. And at the moment, it's going to say no data, but I'm just going to sit here for a little bit and I'll be right back once it starts showing some of my mining data. So after a few minutes, you're finally going to see your miner pop up here. You should see participation by blocks. You see it says KS0 Pro. It says participation by shares. It also says KS0 Pro. And it currently tells me my average hash rate. So after about five minutes or so, you should start to see your miner. And then you'll also start to see the balance change and the total balance eventually load up here. But by what it's showing here, you can tell that my miner has officially connected, especially with this right here saying connected workers equaling one. So that is the first way on how you can solo mine on Caspa. And this does not require you to have your own node running. You don't even need your computer running 24 seven. All you got to do is just simply connect your miner to this public solo mining pool. And then after that, you can pretty much just log into this to see your miner stats whenever you want. You don't need to keep anything else running 24 seven except for your miner. The next option I'm going to be showing you guys is how to solo mine to your own Caspa node. And this would require you to keep whatever system you're running your node on 24 seven. If you don't already have a mini PC so that you can run your node in the background 24 seven, I would recommend checking out this mini PC. The link will be down below in the description and it is affiliate link. So I will receive a little bit of a commission if you do choose to purchase this. And I greatly do appreciate that. But if you do sign in, you can also save 20% with the promo code that they have here. Personally, I did buy the one terabyte 32 gigabytes of RAM version that also has an eight core CPU. To run your node, you're gonna to wanna to come to this link right here, which is the Rusty Caspa GitHub. And then once you come to this link, which is down below in the description, you're just gonna go over here to where it says releases. And then you're gonna go ahead and click that mainnet crescendo release version 1.0.0. This is the latest released for Caspa. And if you are watching this video and a new update has come out, just make sure you are using the latest release. Then you're just gonna scroll down a little bit and then you're gonna see different files that you can download depending on your operating system. Personally, I'm using a Windows PC. So you're gonna go ahead and just download the rusty Caspa version 1.0.0 164.zip file. Once you download that file, it's most likely going to go to your desktop or your downloads or wherever you want to put that. You're going to want to extract that file and create a new file and possibly just name it Caspa or whatever you want, like I have right here. I'm going to go ahead and move this to my desktop. But once you extract whatever is in that zip file, it's going to give you three applications. You're going to get Caspad, Caspa Wallet, and a Rothschild application. 
What you're going to want to do is run the cast pad application, but you need to make sure that you run it with UTXO index on. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on cast pad application and just click copy. And then this way, when I go to the command line interface, copying this allows me to directly go to this application. I can just go ahead and paste what I just copy. And then you want to add a space and then type dash dash UTXO index. And then you're going to want to click enter after clicking enter you're going to know that you're running it correctly when you are seeing the utxo index when it's describing the data directory now personally this is not going to run for me because i'm already running the node in the background right here and as you can see this is a fully operational node you know that it's finished syncing up to the network when you're seeing a bunch of accepted blocks just like this and it typically could take four hours to sync up to the network depending on your hardware for my device it took about four hours so it just depends on your hardware on how quickly it's going to sync up to the network after getting your node to run you are now going to make sure that you download the caspa bridge to download the caspa bridge you're going to just go ahead and head to this github link which is also going to be down below in the description you're going to also do the same exact thing over here where it says releases you're going to click the most latest release just always be on the lookout for new releases so that you can always stay up to date but this is the latest release as of recording you're going to scroll down and do the same thing like you did with rusty caspa you're just going to go ahead and and download the .zip file. And once you download that .zip file, you're gonna also want to extract everything that's in the .zip file and maybe just put it into a Casper folder like I did here. After extracting, you're gonna have a folder that is dedicated to the Casper bridge. I went ahead and named it this right here. Once you go into that, it's gonna be labeled KS underscore bridge. This is another folder you're just gonna go into. And then right here, you're going to have the application that you're going to need to run. Now, before we run the application, we need to make sure that the configuration files are set up correctly. So you're going to go to the config file. And when you're in here, you're going to want to make sure that you change the cast pad address right here to 127.0.0.1. And then you can keep the port the same. You're also going to want to change where it says POW2 underscore clamp. You're going to change this to true because it's most likely going to say false. After making those updates, you're going to be able to run the KS bridge. And all you're going to need to do is just double click this application. It's going to possibly have this pop up about Windows security. You're just going to click allow. And then your Casper bridge is going to connect to your Casper node. And then it's also going to connect to your miner once you point your miner to it. So to point your miner to your own bridge, you're going to want to grab your IPv4 address. What you're going to want to do is go to your command line interface again and then type in here IP config. After doing that, you're going to be able to see your IPv4 address. After clicking enter and grabbing your IPv4 address, you're going to want to head back to your miner and make sure that you update your pool address to still say stratum plus TCP colon forward slash forward slash. You're going to remove everything else here and then paste in your IPv4 address and then you're going to put the port number as being 5555 after you put another colon. Then I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this into all the other selections here and then click save. After clicking save, you're going to see that my stratum bridge is now connecting my miner to the bridge. And as you can see right there, my KS0 Pro is now mining, and this is directly mining to my own node that is currently running right here. Now, there is one more feature that you can add while you're solo mining, and this is if you want to be able to have the same kind of interface while you're solo mining to your own node, I'm going to show you guys how you can download that. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and head to this link to download Go. The link will be down below in the description. And then you're also going to do the same thing to download Git. Just make sure you're downloading the latest releases of Go and Git. Then last but not least, you're going to also want to download Docker. The link will also be down below in the description. And just choose the Docker desktop for Windows or just look for your own operating system so that you can also download Docker to your system. After downloading Docker, make sure that you do open up the application, make an account with it, and just make sure that you are signed in and the application is running in the background. All right, so after you log in and have Docker running in the background, you can just go ahead and minimize this. And then we're gonna go back 
to the Caspa Stratum Bridge GitHub, and we're going to be building the bridge from source instead now. So what you're gonna want to do is simply go to where it says code right here, and then you're gonna wanna go ahead and copy this URL to your clipboard. Then you're gonna wanna go back to your command line interface, and then you're gonna want to go ahead and type git clone, and then go ahead and paste that URL and then just click enter. This is going to clone the Casper Stratum bridge into your PC so that you will have a directory for it. Once you do that, you're going to want to go ahead and type CD Caspa dash stratum dash bridge and click enter. Now you are in the Caspa stratum bridge directory. The next thing you're going to want to do is type CD CMD forward slash Caspa bridge and then click enter after doing that we are now into the directory for the cmd folder and within that folder again is the caspa bridge folder then you're going to want to type go build and click enter after typing go build what that did was simply build the application for caspa bridge into this directory here and then the next thing you want to do is set up Docker so that it can set up your own interface. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and create a brand new tab within the command line interface. Go ahead and type CD Caspa Stratum Bridge again. Then once you're in that directory, you're going to head back to the GitHub and you're just going to want to go ahead and copy and paste this entire command right here where you go to the option two, it says Docker all in one. You're gonna scroll down to this section and just copy and paste this command right here and then click enter. Please make sure that you do have Docker running in the background. And then on top of that, you do have your Casper nodes still running on the background as well. This is just basically gonna build the application so that it can support Docker and then you can actually log into your own interface. While this is all downloading, go ahead and head into your config file that is found within that directory. So to find the config file, you're just gonna go to this PC and then go ahead and go to users and then find the name of your PC. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to Casper Stratum Bridge folder, CMD folder, Casper Bridge folder, and then that's where your config file is gonna be. You're gonna double click that config file, make sure you update all of the same exact things that we updated last time. So the CASP address to 127.0.0.1 and then also changing the POW2 clamp to true and then just saving this and exiting that. And then we can go back and wait for this to finish downloading. A tip I want to share with you guys is if you get any kind of errors during this process on your command line interface, just go ahead and copy and paste your error into ChatGPT, and it will give you the correct steps to be able to fix whatever kind of errors you are seeing. All right, so this has finished downloading. And if we head over to Docker, you're going to see here that there's a Casper Stratum bridge that is currently running. And now we're going to be able to access that same type of interface like this right here that we were using when we were using the public solo mining, we can now use our own local one to see our own miner. So to get to this link, you're going to go back to the Casper Stratum Bridge GitHub, and you're going to see that the link to see this interface is going to be 127.0.0.1 colon 3000 forward slash login. I'll put the link for this down below. And the credentials to log in is just going to be admin admin. And then it's going to ask you to put a new password. You don't need to if you don't want to. And then it's going to load up the same exact interface. But now this is all being done locally on your own network and you are connected to your own node. So I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for a little bit. And eventually you should see your miner show up here on this interface. All right. So after a few minutes here, you can see that the KS0 Pro is now showing up. And if you just wait a little bit longer, it's going to start calculating all the other data. But if you are seeing this, then you know for sure 
that your miner is connected. So if you guys enjoyed that video, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And before we go, if you have not considered getting yourself a Tandrum wallet, this is a really great way to store your Caspal offline and off exchanges. When you keep your Caspal on an exchange, you may or may not ever see your Caspal again if that exchange was to go bankrupt because they have full ownership of your Caspal. So Tandrum is a great way so that you can store your Caspal and self custody it so that you have complete ownership if you use the code caspa silver at the checkout you will receive 10 percent off your order and you will receive three caspa cards and the link will be down below in the description to pick this up please leave a like subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here and as always don't be average be different